coming to the next session. So all, we already a lot of, heard a lot about copyright today, and I will give you an introduction into OrphanWorks and how film archives deal with this directive in the Forward Project. It's a bit more than two or three things, but I thought it was a nice title from the Godard film, but it's a bit longer. <laughs> But I tried, but I tried to go quicker to through the slides because I think we are really far behind schedule. No problem. Okay. What is an orphan work? I don't know who is familiar with this orphan work concept. I mean, I think most of the Cinematheque people, I guess, because uh, ACE has talked a lot about it since five or seven years. So an orphan work is a book let's forget about a book, talking about films. It's a film which is still copyright protected, but whose authors are uh, or rights holders are not known or cannot be found, even if you have searched for them. So which means only copyrighted protect, also copyrighted works can be often works. What's the problem? The problem is that you have nobody to ask for permission if you want to use a work. Uh, be patient, I'll come back, I, I'm coming to this uh, point later, <laughs> later, be patient. So, so, and if you don't know how to, whom to ask, and then you use the work, you risk copyright infringement. So each archive has, it all, has its own policy about risk management, using works which are not cleared. Anyway, but legally it's a copyright infringement if you use a work if, without permission. And on the other hand, if you search for the author, this costs a lot of money, it's expensive, and uh, so you have to think about what you do. And the expertise sometimes is also missing because I think mm, pff, among the AC member archives, there are only a few institutions which have a legal department. And so, uh, yeah. Um, AC did a survey several years ago, and unfortunately we don't have any new figures. Um, so asking the colleagues about the situation, the right situation in their collections, we came up with this figure. So out of around 1 million films, you can say that uh, almost more than 40% have either of, are either often works or the rights are the copyright status is unknown. So and 20% uh, have been identified or considered orphan. Uh, and this percentage is a bit the same as I has uh, when you did your images for the future project, I think that was kind of also 20% works were have been considered orphan. So and this is uh, the production period. So it's obviously you can find most often works um, at the before produced before 1950. Um, because yes, yeah, all, the older the work gets, the, the difficult is to trace the chain of rights back. We our argument was all always um, these films should be made available because they might not have a much commercial uh, value, but a lot of cultural value for, for not only the archives, but also the user. So I skip a little bit the history of the orphan works legislation because it's very, it's the kind of political lobby work, what ACE did for five or six years. Um, but um, what we can say is that um, it's a, the orphan works legislation has been conceived for Europeana in a way. So it was about bringing more content online, more films and also other cultural content. Um, the discussion was about uh, there is a 20th century black hole. All the material is copyright protected, so you cannot publish it online, you have to clear copyrights for that. And um, so this was the initial point to, to really 
lobby for a directive or for a legal solution to bring these uh, works online. So in October 2012, um, the European Parliament and the Council have adopted the directive and it is now has been tra transposed in all countries, in all the 28 member states. <coughs> So what are the key points? Lisette, she already said most of the most important points. Only public mission institutions, but also educational establishments that hold the work can use an orphan work, which means that it's good for the archives, we can use it, but if you don't have a collection, so you cannot use an orphan work. So it must be in your collection. You can declare it orphan and you can use it. And um, before, coming to Tina's question, before you can use this work, you have to perform a diligent search. Diligent means you have to search a lot of sources, many, many, many sources, which is not true in all European countries, because fin in Finland, you have only to search three sources. But in Germany, for example, you have to search all the film databases of the Film Heritage Institution, which makes sense in a way because they hold the information. But you have to search um, also the um, funding agency of each la land. So you have to ask them whether they have any kind of information on the rights holders. So and we, yeah, you have to, and you have to check these famous producer databases or information sources and of course the collective management societies. In Italy it's the same. Italy has a, Italy has a strange regulation that um, you must publish but we will talk about it later when we come. You have to publish this work for 19 days on a specific database before you can declare it often. So it must be 90 days online somewhere. But this is only in Italy. Um, the problem with the producers information sources whatsoever is that you cannot query them automatically. So you have to pick up the phone and ask them, do you have information about this and that film? And of course, they don't have any. I mean, some of them have, but considering the fact that producer hold information about films from the 1970s, the earliest, so it's not very likely that they have information about a film produced in the 1920s. But anyway, these are mandatory sources which you have to search and um, according to the legislation. The uses are a bit limited, so you can use it for preservation, digitization, cataloging and indexing. You can use it online and you can use it for non-commercial purposes. And uh, all, all kind, types of material, cultural material are covered apart from photographs. So photographs do not fall under the Orphan Works Directive. Yes. You are the, the, the archive. Ah. <laughs> you can use it, you can put it online, but uh, another user, non beneficiary user, cannot put it online. No, so, so the people can watch it on your website, yeah. but they cannot take it from the website and share it on other. Uh, theoretically, not, but there has been this new legislation about embedding embedding films, I yeah. don't know. Lisette, you know more about it? Uh, yeah, it's not legislation, but it's the, um, uh, case the, law the European Court of Justice, yeah. uh, so the Supreme Court of Europe, um, has decided that linking is not communication to the public, uh, and embedding is linking. So you can just embed everything that's copyright restricted <coughs> and it's not a copyright act, so to speak. So you can just do that. Uh, so if you can, yeah, if you allow embedding on your website, then technically you could use it on a different platform. Um, 
if but I'm not aware of any technical restrictions that are specified in the Orphan Works Directive that prevent this. I don't think so, no, but I no. would have to check the legislation. No, but there's no nothing, technical right? restrict. Yeah. So linking and embedding is your friend. Yes. Yes. But let's say officially it's only you, <laughs> officially you no. as an archive, you are a beneficiary, you hold the work, you can make it available online. These are the sources of the European Directive. Um, <laughs> one could expect that member states implement this more precisely, but they didn't do that. So they kept it very vaguely and uh, most of the member states didn't change it. Some have added further sources like Germany. And um, yeah, this is these sources are unspecified, which makes it very difficult um, to find an end to this list. I mean, you can search five databases from producers, you can search 10, there are several around in Germany. So it's up to the archives to decide where to stop the search. Tina, you decide where to stop the search. <laughs> it must be diligent and it must in a way in line with the... Uh, this is the, the European legislation, but there's of course a, a German one, which you can check. So what are the benefits? The benefits are, of course, that it's the only copyright exception which works across Europe. It's in a way harmonized. Uh, you have legal certainty. So if a work is declared often, you can use it. If a work is declared often in one country, you can use it in the other country as well. So my Charlie Chaplin film, if I have a Charlie Chaplin film in my archive and it's often, and you have the same title in your, you don't have to do the search, you can just use it because I have declared it often. Won't happen with Charlie Chaplin, but um, you can ask. This is in the legislation that you, that you are allowed to cover costs for digitizing orphan works. But then I'm asking myself if I'm the only one, maybe you can charge costs for another beneficiary who wants to use it. Just yet. that's can you do. You can ask your colleague, please pay me for the digitization costs. It is so in a way okay for smaller digitization projects and, and for projects which require title by title clearing for films, but it's not really not, um, easy to handle if you want to do kind of mass digitization of posters or newspapers so um, these are the limits so the diligent search requirement and this is really a pity because uh, we wanted this legislation and is you supported very much uh, to have a legislation which allows you to use open works was to facilitate the use of open works but now with these sources um it's not it's it's not even more complicated but it's not really a f it's, it doesn't makes your life easier as I said, Finland is the only best practice example because they have only three sources which they have to query. You cannot use it commercially, as I said, only for some use cases. And there is um, a lack of interest of the rights holders to support this directive, but there's also a lack of inter interest from the cultural heritage institutions to use the directive. So this is an orphan film which is um, available on the film portal. If you have found an orphan film after having um, performed your search, you have to register this work within the OIPO database, formerly known as OHIM database. <laughs> it's managed by the Euro European Commission and there you can register all types of works are registered, not only orphan films, but other content as well. So and this is the film registered in the Orphan Works database. So if you are looking for Orphan Works films, books, uh, just check the OIPO database. What has this to do with Forward or how does Forward um, deal with this 
directive and also the complications of the directive. So Forward is a pilot project initiated by ACE and funded by the EU. We are 13 partners in the consortium, 11 partners are film archives with a strong focus on film heritage. So what Forward tries to do is to build a tool to assess the right status of audiovisual works, so to make this whole diligent search process easier and um, not really automatic, but uh, so, so that you can search more systematically for orphan works. And it's also a register for orphan films. So these are the goals. We try to assess the right status. Is the film public domain? Is it copyright protected? And if it's copyright protected, is it orphan or not? We support, the tool supports the diligent searches. And one of the aims is also to reduce, by doing this, the costs to clear rights. And we hope to get more films with a clear rights indication. And we help the film archives to implement the Open direct, Open Works Directive in their countries. I do not really want to go into details of the whole system because it's very technical, but that's in a way the, the, the workflow, the steps you have to perform. So you enter a title and then um, the system establishes the copyright status saying it's this sounds easy but it's it not it is not so easy so it's um to establish the copyright status whether it's copyright protected or orphan or presumed orphan you feed it in a way with information from the databases from all the partners involved in the project so you have the in information about um, film titles uh, authors, birth dates, which, which is very important to establish if the film is already in copyright or not. And um, if you have established the, hmm? yeah, also par partially often because the film has more rights owners. And if you have um, um, found one of them, it's only a, it's partially often. So, so in establishing the right status, you have to follow um, national legislations. This is also something which makes it complicated because you have heard it. Each country has its own national law, not only uh, national copyright law, but also diff kind of different um, rules for searching for the authors and to do to perform the diligent search so if it's an italian film you follow the italian copyright rules we call this legal decision tree if it's a german film we follow the german legislation and so on so we have these um, work these decision trees for all the countries which are represented in the forward project so once you have this copyright status so it is copyright protected, then you can check whether this film is orphan or not. So and now you cannot rely only on the information of the databases from the film archives. You have to check these, what I always call third party things, producers, information, collective management, society information. This is, cannot be done automatically, but uh, Forward will provide you with a list so for each country, there's a list with the sources you have to check. And then, then you can see, then you can click which, um, with which sources you have checked because you have, according to the law, you have to document your diligent search. It must be re registered in a way in the system. So as I said, this information cannot be created automatically. You have to pick up the phone, call these people, and if you get an information, this information is entered manually into this forward system. So, as I said, system doesn't mean systematically there's always um, human intervention necessary, also when it comes up to decide if this work is orphan or not. So this is not a decision made by the system. In the end, the beneficiary user, the archive, who does the search, must take 
the responsibility and make the decision this is an open work or not this is not something will which the system will do for you so and once you have established the, the you have established the status and if, if it's an orphan work it will be uploaded to this european or epo database it's not clear now whether via an xml sheet or whether they will be an api to upload it automatically this is still under development so this is um, how it works theoretically this is uh, we call it the forward architecture it's a little bit the same what i have explained before on my slide before so you have this copyright status close up copyright status Ah, copyright status assistant. This is, I don't remember what is cross COSAP meets, but this is the way how to establish the copyright status. If it's under copyright, you can go to the second step, which is the assisted diligent search, pro pro search process. If you want to know if it's an orphan works, you check the databases. Um, no, you, you check. Sorry, now I'm a bit confused, but Again, so you, in this here you have, um, in the catalog SIP system, you have the databases and information from the film archives, which um, are uh, checked during this uh, workflow. Here you have to, you have the, um, below you have the external sources which you have to enter, the information you have to enter manually and uh, something else and if it's an orphan work you this is at the end of the slide you have to provide this into information to the ohim database so is it yeah this is uh, the the general uh, way how it works so to sum up this Sorry, this was a kind of, let's forget about this technical setup here in this uh, slide. It's kind of, as I said before, we have three steps for establishing, for establishing the status, whether it's often, often or not often. And you need information from your databases, from the archives databases and third party information. Um, so to sum up what, what, what forward does is, um, is support, as I said, it supports, but doesn't replace manual intervention. It searches the databases from the project partners and lists also external databases and, and information sources com compliant to the often works legislation. It offers options for entering search results from external sources, and we consider it as a kind of learning system, though this information will be documented. Um, so if you have found um, information and you do a second search for another film and you have the same, so then you have uh, this um, information that maybe you have found the rights holder and you can enter this information system. It documents the diligent search process and um, the results are uploaded to the OIPO database. This is the partnership. The project is coordinated by Cinematheque Royale de Belgique. And yeah, that's it. If you want to know more about the project, please contact either me or the colleagues at the Cinematheque. I'm a bit sorry for the technical setup, but it's, it's late today and um, I can explain it better next time. <laughs> But have you, for me, it's important that you have the, an idea about how this um, often works legislation functions and how forward deals with it. Uh, I think it was pretty clear what forward is trying to do. I don't think it's yeah. necessary to oh, it's understand in detail how no, you're going to do yeah. it, but in general. Um, working in a cinematic but not being in the film archive um, I just think I have some more questions about this what exactly often means because I remember Lisette said it's, we cannot screen it right or did I um, 
you can you we also can we put it online and we can screen it right yeah. but uh, but not yeah under but i'm just this, asking i'm not under this um direction okay. but of course if you that says if it's in your if it's in if your I have archive, it in my archive of course i can screen it and i can also put it online because there is no other rights holder right okay yes if you are the rights holder yeah. you can do with it whatever you please of course but if it's if often, you are not the rights holder but mm -hmm. it's in your collection you can probably show it within your institution also it, in the cinema of course i'm gonna say yes <laughs> but <laughs> thank you don't pin me down on that <laughs> uh, and if you are not the rights holder uh, and you are also not able to locate the rights holder so mm -hmm. and you it's officially an orphan work you can publish it on your own website but so those are th three different yeah but uh, yeah of course uh, that's fine if it's different but i'm not really interested i just need to know what can i do in my film literacy activities so yes so that's mm -hmm. dependent on the right status of the work so, okay, so i can't give you a general no of course I, yeah. I understand by but but just very practical yes. um like um for example also a stupid question but i'm going to ask because that's why we're here <laughs> yes um normally the film archives do they have a list of their often works i mean if i go to my colleague will he say oh yes this is you can use for your film literacy activity because it's orphan um i would argue you can't um, use it for your film literacy activities no? because it's an orphan uh, what <laughs> <laughs> well in sorry internally externally it's more difficult unless it's on your own website i'm not making this much clearer no. um um I think that if you go to your legal department, if you have one, no, 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 okay. That's why exactly why yeah. I have all these questions. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. But um, if it's in your collection, um, it probably has in the metadata somewhere a right status. Okay. Um, if that's not the case, uh, hire someone to take care of that for you. Mm. Um, <laughs> if if that says public domain, do whatever you want with it if it says rice holder third party and then contact number contact them if it says nothing assume you can't use it until somebody tells you otherwise but what, what you definitely cannot do is to publish this on a, on a dvd for example that's no. not possible at least not under this uh, legislation legislation yeah so the orphan works directive is for most of film education purposes if that assumes online publication and resharing it doesn't help you. What Orphan Works does help you with is showing it on your own website under special conditions. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can show it in the cinema. Mm, you cannot publish them, but you might be able to show them internally. The but I'm but being very careful here. Uh, I'm not sure. I think much of the confusion around this comes a little bit from the practice um, that we that we all practiced until today and, and continue to practice, which is not str strictly like um, rights managing what we do uh, it is also partially risk managing what mm -hmm. we do. Good point. Um, mm. so um, it, it, it as Lee said said before um, with often with labeling something an often work um, we will still be able to do what we have done with it before obviously if that was legal and um, the question is was it legal before mm. or not and um, so and this is a, where the uh, initial uncer uncertainty i think comes from so um uh, nothing changes by labeling it an orphan work actually if you probably if you just show it here in this workshop or for your for for a small set of uh, um, of, of workshop participants it's probably considered i guess internal use um mm. then you're allowed probably um, but if I make a public um, screening, people come, pay for their tickets, come here, uh, anybody can come, then probably it's not allowed. Uh, 
I don't know if this is correct because in the you, you can see in the um, in the OIPO database that there is a, a field called use. If it's only online use, why would you have this field? I mean, then it's if you can only publish it on your website, is it a kind of it's, it doesn't make sense because this I would assume that if there is use that there are other kind of uses, online uses possible as well. But um, that just, just or, something. It, I mean, not legal, but logic. If something <laughs> is orphan, yeah. no, yeah, but if something is orphan, who on the hell will <laughs> ask me, tell me something? Or if he tell me something, he has to demonstrate that my diligent search hasn't be so diligent. Or yes. he has to demonstrate that he is the right holder. So I will die before he succeed to do it. But Enrica, this but is actually not, not completely true because no, no uh, there's no requirement that the rights that the so-called up coming up rights holder claiming the rights has to prove that he has the rights. This is not written in the directive. So how, how you, if you, you will... have, if you're a very clever country, Italy you may have it in your legislation we don't have it in our legislation finland again has it in their legislation that the rights holder someone showing up must prove that he holds the rights but uh, it's not in the german law and uh, but i think it's not such a i don't expect too many well, rights holders showing up there's also this uh, other issue that we experienced with, uh, within the European Film Gateway project um, that because the Orphan Works Directive okay, uh, was only implemented quite recently, we have a number of partners that say, okay, this is basically, or we think it is an orphan work, but we did the research like, I don't know, a couple of years back. So the diligent search guidelines didn't exist at the point, which means that they now say we cannot actually say it's an often work because I mean we we think it is, but uh, to be on a legally um, uh, or to, for it to be legally binding or official, we have to do the research again according to the diligent search di uh, guidelines. We actually have this very case with a couple of our partners um, who say, okay, you know, basically it's probably often, but we have to do the whole thing again, you know, going through the sources that are mentioned in the in the legislation. Yeah. But on the other hand, I mean, upcoming rights holders cannot ask for a lot of, I mean, the, the law says that they have the right to compensation, but this must be in line with the potential commercial or value of the work. So, and this is, this is. Uh, and I would like to add a little bit to that because Julia is completely right over how ridiculous it is that we've already spent a lot of public money thinking things are orphan works and now we have to do it again. Again, spending a lot mm. of time and money researching whether something is an orphan, but that's can't really change that. But I think Joe mentioned a very important thing is that this is, today we're really discussing the letter of the law. Mm. Um, with my presentation earlier, I tried to be as practical as possible. Uh, but also in terms of internal policies as a cultural heritage institution, you can make a risk analysis. Mm. If you're pretty sure work is an orphan, if you've done like a basic research and it's from the 20s or 30s and you would like to show it, you could also just, I mean, again, not a lawyer, not legal advice, but they can come and sue you, right? Who's going to show up? Yeah, and and that's dangerous. So you have mm. to be very. I mean, you have to make a risk analysis, and you need to be prepared for potential consequences. But you know, I think uh, authors <laughs> have a very good knowledge of their collections and the value of their collections. Yeah. And I think they will not make a f declare a film orphan if it's no. But declaring yeah. it orphan and entering mm. it to the database, not so much. Mm. Showing it on the premises with a, or p putting it on on your website, you could also just do it and. Yeah say um if you think you are the rights holder of this work please contact mm. us mm. again mm. this is technically probably copyright infringement so you would be breaking the law yeah. but as an institution you can have a discussion on this based on your internal policies 
And I know of several examples where people just do this. They just publish it online and mm. uh, tell me otherwise. Mm. It's, uh, so a, it's an option. Yeah, so, I think this uh, so the reality we, will work that way. I think so. So I, maybe I we, are there any examples of uh, film institutions who did already a risk analysis and have a special policy to this? Well, every time you publish anything online, especially a movie, it's a risk analysis. Yeah. Because you can never be sure you covered all the rights. Just a little question. Uh, if a film is an orphan and uh, that I have it in my uh, collection, uh, can I adopt it? Ah, uh, yes, please do so. <laughs> But in a way, all orphan works are already adopted because archives take care of them. It's kind of yeah. adoption already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well in, in Denmark, we have a strong collecting society. We, we, uh, the right shows are very well organized in mm -hmm. Denmark. So giving this exception from the general rule of copyright, they are very... Um, mad about it actually mm. because they're saying well you cannot just define a, a, a work to be often um, and and to some extent we, we we sense that we have to make a risk analysis because they are so up in our you know um, on, yeah. on on what we do being a cinematic being archive and having educational things going on and so on so you can say that the directive does does not solve the fundamental problem we are facing mm. being educational mm. institutions and archive institutions yeah. that we need something to to balance mm. the open education yeah. uh, vision yeah. together with of course uh, fair remuneration of right holders we haven't gone we have we are not there yet with this directive so we are still in we have to navigate I think. Yeah. I think. I think initially the directive was designed differently, with a better, let's say, better for the archives and uh, less restrictive. But if, as it is always the case when you are in these negotiation process and you have all these in amendments from rights holders organization, what what we got in the end is not what we wanted in the in the beginning. This might be a, a bit of a plus famous question, but if it's so much time, efforts, work and money to put in to clear the status of the work mm. as orphaned, mm. and uh, who would be, in besides film archives, who would be interested to do that and, and, and what kind of institution this forward platform is uh, designed, who would use it in the end uh, and, and go to the whole process and then have a, a, a film from the 20s with the stations off and, and all I can do with it is just put it online. Yeah, that's so, so the, mm. I, I wonder what this uh, amount of effort I put into and what I get out of it. I mean, it might, might be interesting for public mm. institutions like ours, but who else? Uh, at, at what institution think, is it aimed yeah, to, this whole it, directive? I would put it the other way around. I think if then it's the film archives or the forward partners who will use the open work direct, uh, directive through the forward project. Okay. Or the other, um, I mean, as I said, for other sectors, there's also a strong reserve in Germany from the museums, mm. from the libraries. They want to not, they don't want to use this legislation and they want something different, which allows them to have mastered to this station, which mm -hmm. is not possible with the directive. And as, as I said, for us, it's not such a problem because we always will clear film, clear films title by title. Mm. So this is a directive that's aiming directly at film archives. No, <laughs> the forward system aims at um, the archives. So it's a yeah, directive yeah. which mm -hmm. is for all, all yeah, yeah. cultural heritage yeah, institutions yeah. and okay. educational establishments. Oh. But the forward project is especially designed okay. for the film archive. Okay, see. Um, mm -hmm. but there has been a former project called Arrow, which was for the book sector. Okay. Just a question also to Lisette and Kerstin. Uh, are there any examples what happened to persons who used film for film literacy things? Mm. Death penalty or? 
<laughs> no, it's, I mean, no, but it's always good to know because I, I always know there is some certain danger, but I'm never sure are we talking about 10,000 euros, a million, 100 wow. euros. No, really, I mean, it's a, it, it, I really want to know. <laughs> but just the post stamp size and they were sued for I think 50,000 um, which is a lot of money uh, the judge however decided that yes this was copyright infringement because they placed it online without permission um, but 50,000 was nowhere near the level of reach mm. so they got a fine that's a lot less I don't remember exactly how much but a lot less what they did have to pay was the legal costs of both parties. Mm. Um, so I'm not saying there's no risk, but um, especially if it's not for commercial distribution that you made the error, um, judges will be relatively lenient in inexperienced. Um, but Tindy, you weren't talking about orphan works, but of things, because yeah. this is there's no legal risk with the thing often works. That's that's why we have this directive. You can have to pay money to re to recompensate the rights holder. But there's should there's no legal risk because of the exception. But, but potentially there, there's uh, a risk coming up because, uh, just as an example, in Denmark we have this Denmark on film, which is very old movies, and you can dot in your lo location, and then you can see films from that location. Mm. I think also in UK they have the same. And now we're talking with a commercial publisher on making historical uh, b learning materials for historical lessons in the schools using this. And if they want to embed one of uh, some of these films, which are some of them are often works in their commercial publishing site for the schools then we are facing a new challenge because if we really want to take this film education agenda mm -hmm. any further, we need to engage with the, uh, with the private sector making learning materials for the schools and so on. So we are there again, and I, I think I'm getting back to the old question, how can we solve this in order to make a good balance between open education on the one hand and the other hand having some kind of system models for uh, payment to the right holders and uh, the producers and so on. We are not there yet in the digital world because everything is so linked. And we have so many new opportunities to link up with other institutions, private, public, museums and so on. So it's a big problem we are facing here. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, do we do the break or? Okay, coffee break. Coffee break. A real coffee break. <laughs> <laughs>